I think an ANC loss uh, to a coalition would mean a great reconfiguration of the South African political scene. What will the ANC do as it declines? This is a question posed by Jonathan katzen ellenbogen in a recent piece that he wrote for the Daily Friend. He joins us today. So Jonathan, you started your piece by speaking about the fact that Jacob Zuma, the former president, once said that the ANC will rule forever. I think he said, it will rule until Jesus comes. Uh, that doesn't look likely as we approach the 2024 national elections. No, it, it looks increasingly unlikely. Um, but, you know, other factors could um, uh, intervene. The fact is that it's showing at the local government elections last year was absolutely atrocious. It only got 46% of the poll. Uh, it's OK, it's a local government elections, turnout isn't high. And in this election, it was only 30%. But um, some recently done polling for a private organisation for internal purposes only, uh, revealed that it, uh, it only polls around the, the same amount, and it had consistently polled um, ar around the 46% mid-40s level uh, for some time. So the indications are of decline. And, um, you know, to the extent that one has any political feel in talking to people, talking to a wide range of people, uh, one gets the view that uh, people are uh, drifting away from the party. It certainly doesn't have the standing that it had uh, five um, um, and certainly not uh, 30 years ago. It's much diminished. And as you point out in your article, which we'll link to below, and I'd certainly encourage our viewers to give that a read. Uh, there are so many headwinds facing the party. There's rising inflation, there's the electricity crisis, uh, and also uh, internal divisions and factions within the party, as well as a fiscal problem for the party itself. Last year in the build-up to the local government elections, the party was unable to pay salaries, it's continuing to face cash flow problems there. So that's quite a confluence of, of different negative headwinds. Uh, the, the largest problem they face here, and the most immediate problem is the uh, power crisis. And without resolving that, they can't show that they're really in charge. After all, ESCOM is a state-owned enterprise. Everyone knows that. And uh, they're increasing power cuts. They have been since uh, 1994. And they've simply been unable to resolve the situation. And the latest, and it shows that if they can't resolve this, they're out of control. They don't know what to do. And it shows um, to the electorate, we're not in charge, basically. That's what it says. The ANC is not in charge. It can't do the basics. It can't do the basis, basics of delivery. It can't uh, deliver power. Well, Jonathan, how do you think the party will respond to these uh, challenges to its electoral fortunes? Uh, do you see it uh, course correcting or doubling down on uh, some of the hostile policies that have gotten the economy into this bad shape in the first place? I think that there is a now an increased risk that it will go the uh, highly populist route. You know, it's been talking about expropriation without compensation. It was unable to, uh, to get that through Parliament, bizarrely, because of the uh, economic freedom fighters stand. But it might now push EWC um, uh, through Parliament. Um, another big issue out of the policy conference was uh, the issue of Reserve Bank independence. It wants the Reserve to change the mandate um, and broaden it to both growth and, um, uh, and employment. And that would be problematic and would definitely be an interference and would probably require a change in the um, uh, constitution. Um, you know, they, it's an attempt really to grab hold of monetary policy, make it easier and easier for the politicians for the ANC to uh, uh, be uh, re-elected. Then there are the other issues that they raise, you know, create a state bank and allow uh, more credit. Um, and the history of, um, of state-owned enterprises is absolutely disastrous. Uh, they want to do something about unemployment, but it's not clear what they can do. They, they're going for the social pacts with, with 
compacts, as they call them, with business, and they'll try and get business to create more jobs. But what re one really needs is a better and improved um, uh, in investment um, in environment. Um, you know, then there's the national health, health insurance that um, I'm sure I'm sure will will gain uh, get greater con uh, traction over coming months. And uh, of course, the whole issue of what will replace the COVID um, uh, grant, um, social relief of distress grant, that comes to an end in February and has to be replaced by something. So the question is, will it be replaced by a basic income grant? They'll, they'd have to um, revamp the entire grant system to do that. But in the meantime, they could bring in a, um, uh, um, a special grant just before the election, perhaps. Who knows what they'll do, but they're bound to take populist measures, given all the pressure they're under. That is, if Treasury will allow it. Treasury, the National Treasury uh, usually um, rules um, on, on, on such matters. But, you know, the question is, and something to watch, whether, is whether it will continue to be the, uh, the, the last agency in government that puts up its hand and says no, no, no on these big spending matters. Yeah, so the pressure for pork barrel politics is only going to grow. But now, Jonathan, how do you think uh, this particular issue of the welfare grants is going to be used by the ANC? Because we've seen in past elections, ANC is very quick to remind the electorate that they are the providers of the welfare grants. And if the DA or another party had to come in, then those welfare grants will be scrapped. Do you think that's going to be used as a tool for manipulating the electorate? Yes, it's a big scare tactic, and they've used it in the past. And I think it works because people who wouldn't normally vote for the ANC or not be too keen on going to the polls, if they're on grants, they may, may well rush to the polls out of uh, self-interest. And it's, um, uh, it's a scare tactic. It's worked in the past, and I think it'll work um, in the future. And if they come up with a, 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 a special grant and they... I, um, unlikely to extend the social relief of distress grant, but if they come up with another or pave the way uh, to a basic income grant, they can gain traction and credibility on this issue. And this is what I think they can do. Then they can use the scare tactic um, of, of, the, of the DA and the other opposition parties will take away your, your grants more effectively. So I think this, is, this scare tactics will be used extensively. And how much do you think the ANC would respond to defeat at the polls in 2024? Well, this is the big issue. You must remember that um, <clears throat> the ANC might will still be the biggest party. I think no analyst thinks that it uh, doesn't does not think that it'll be the biggest. It'll just be the possibility. Defeat will mean that it will not be part of the ruling coalition, i.e., the all the other parties together in a coalition will um, see the um, ANC out of government. But um, through CADA de deployment over the years, it, um, it has probably hundreds of thousands um, of uh, CADAs in key positions in, uh, uh, in the police um, and elsewhere, in government departments, in senior positions that can still undermine um, the uh, policy of whatever go government uh, comes into power, a, a coalition type government, and they can cause substantial disruption. Similarly, the unions can uh, um, cause disruption as well. But um, one has to remember that should they lose, um, a great deal of their power um, will be gone. And there's the old adage, power is where power goes. So if power goes, uh, goes elsewhere, then uh, the ANC will be left with a, um, a lot else. One has to really see this play out, and any predictions are difficult because a, you know, ANC supporters, being opportunists as um, one would expect, uh, many are, um, would go would go elsewhere. They would um, the party might split. They might join other parties. So uh, the I think an ANC loss uh, to a coalition would mean a great reconfiguration of the South African political scene. Jonathan Katzenellenbogen, thank you very much.
Let's hear from you, our audience. How do you think the ANC will respond to its electoral decline? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Also, a quick notice that this is our 500th video on the CRA channel. We are delighted to be able to bring you our insights and analysis, as well as the perspective of our guests. And we hope to bring you many more videos in the future. Thank you very much for joining us on the channel. If you're new here, we release a new video every weekday morning at 6 a.m. So if that appeals to you, please do hit that subscribe button as well as the bell icon to be alerted about all of our new videos. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.